Hello and welcome to Magna Theobald Worlds. This is going to be a Necromunda Sump C build. Yes it is. Uh, following on from the great reception that my last Sea pair of videos had of the uh, the, the impromptu Sump C uh, Ale House and Fishmongers, uh, the, the Sump C kind of like uh, ash waste hab unit things, this thing. Um, I decided that before I start making some scenery for Just Red, check him out, check him out, painted for me by the awesome Simon Purdue. Um, before I start making scenery for Just Red, oh, and I've also, look, even I have been painting some Star Wars figures, uh, yep, and kind of, you know, Twi'lek kind of like thing, and, and, and look, Trandashant, all right, Bosk and uh, stuff. Um, before I start getting into uh, um, Judge Dread and some more stuff for Star Wars, I am going to do another Necromunda build. Um, and the Sump Sea, ah, my heart is, is where my heart is at with all the Necromunda stuff. So I am going to make another thing, another build out on the Sump. And I hope. I hope if I can find the right thing, uh, I'm going to build a thing that I've had in my mind for a long time and one of the guys watching my last video also made a suggestion of. So what we're going to have to do straight away, without me telling you what's going to go on, is we are going to have to go digging through the cack. Yes we are, but not the cack in here, not the little cack. The box is a cack up there. We've got to go digging through the big cack. Um, so we're going to have to go out to the garage uh, and uh, go and see if we can find the big cack that I'm looking for. So um, probably needs to, oh yeah, I need to grab this camera and we're going to go for a bit of a walk. Hang on a minute, let's go see what we can see. So we're not going in this cack box. Uh, we're not going in this cack box. We're not going in the cack boxes down here. And neither are we even looking in the cack boxes under the workbench. No, we're going this way. There's the last build, by the way. Look, waiting to go in the box. There's a box for that to go. Let's go this way. All right. Through our garage room. This is called the Geek Suite. Called the Geek Suite because it's got Predators and Dreads and Wookies and Scooby Dooby Doo! And, um,. Yeah, and Ludo and uh, and all the pictures of my wife with various kind of like, um, yeah, friendly kind of peoples and nerdy nerdy things and stuff. And then right, out of the back, out of the back, all the garage, round to the other garage. This, this is the garage where all the terrain is kept. This is all uh, Magathea Builder World's terrain, what we got here. Um, Done lending scenery, boroughs and badger stuff. You might remember some of this being built. Um, Benfliot, Benfliot, roundhouses, town walls, more Benfliot, the fighting pit. Remember that one? Um, and then we've got Star Wars stuff, Benfliot lighthouse, yeah. Uh, the sump precinct for Necromunda. This is all for Necromunda stuff down here. And then round the back here, we'll 40 millimeter. And then this stack, you could just about see there's a whole stack in there. That's all scenery in there. This is all scenery here, and then that's a double row of Games Workshop figure cases. Oh, with pretty much painted figures in as well. It work. So this is for a game called End of Empire. Uh, and then we've got 16th century stuff. and Yeah. Uh, so that's like where a lot of the stuff gets stored in this here garage. But actually, we're looking for big cack. Now, this is some big cack. Um, in fact, this is part of a... Playmobil submarine. This is big cack. Oh, 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 and then this big cack. This is big cack that's going to become a Judge Dread model. That's way cool. But over here in this box, tea chest, more big cack, bits of Playmobil ship cart in here somewhere. I'm hoping. Memory serves because a little while it's been in here. I mean, look, the bits of plumbing. That's way cool. How is that just not already on Neck and Wonder Uh, I don't know. So, Harry Potter things waiting to be turned into a book. Oh, there we are. Here we are. Here we are. Lurking over there in the corner. That's a freaking great big shot. That, that could go in the sump, but this is what we want. Flipping heck. Been in there a little while, haven't you? 
Yes! That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Playmobil shipping container ship. That is what we're going to make this build on. I hope if it fits on the board. It's going to be a tight squeeze. Let's check it out. I'll take it back to the workshop, see if it fits on the board. Okay. Here we are then. Look, check it out. This is my Playmobil container ship. There must be a roof for that. I'll have to go back out and look in the knackers. Um, What's cool is, you know, I mean, you could, it would be entirely possible, it does actually fit on my, my baseboards nicely. If I wanted to do a thing, just fit it on and be a ship, that's cool. Um, that's great. But, um, I want to build sump hab units on this in a kind of random kind of way and have people living on it. I want it to be part of um, the sump, but... It looks in far too good condition right now uh, for it to be um, any good. You know, there's no reason why it shouldn't be kind of like all fine hunky dory. It's a great model. I mean, fact it's in the end. Have I got any Necromunda figures? Where's your biggest saw lock when I need him? I was over there. Oh, look, I've got some Van Sar I'm kind of like working on. Oh, I'm working on. I've kind of, but look, there's a Van Sar dude. I mean, Van Sar guys on here, they kind of fit. It's big and all the rest of it. It's kind of neat. I like it already. Um, I could just necromunder it up, and in fact, I had thought about Star Wars in it up as well because there's that episode, isn't there? And yes, Tim, there is. There's that episode in The Mandalorian where um, they go to that planet where he crashes the his ship in and it doesn't land it properly and falls in the water, and he goes out with the, the little um, you know, froggy people who are with baby Yoda eating the eggs and stuff and then he gets jumped, jobbed by a bunch of quarren and he goes on a big fishing vessel and I could do something with this but actually my, my pro the whole problem with it is it's too high up oh, it is a good thing though it is a really cool thing but it's too high out of the water the sides are got a tape measure well I've got a tape measure everywhere is at least three inches up and there's four inches high there and the top of the cabin is over 60 years old which is great but it's also in too good condition it is in fantastic condition i don't want it to be in really good condition so i've got a couple of choices i could either first of all i could take a screwdriver to all the the bits that hold it together i think they hold together with screws it's kind of make it but oh yeah i could uh, take out um yeah the, this deck bit. Um, I don't know what that will achieve. I can have a fiddle with that and take that out. But what I really want to do is sink it, and I'd like it to be tipping over at a bit of an angle. So I think what I need to do first of all, um, especially as it's got a little ball a bit there, I think what I need to do first of all is, is have a go with a sharpie and kind of draw, have a go drawing on some lines and some angles. And then I'm going to do something I don't think, I can't remember the last time I did it in a model, in a build, if I've done it at all. Uh, I'm going to take a Dremel, <laughs> and I'm going to cut this baby so it's sunk, half submerged. Um, and then, <laughs> talk about making it hard for myself, then I'll look at adding um, the sump hab units and bits and pieces on. Um, so either I'm going to sink it from the back up, that might be the easiest solution, and have a line cut from here across and going across there, so the stern is down in the water and the nose is up, that might be quite neat. Or do it the other way around, so the stern is under the water and this, this back end here is up, although that would be, yeah I could cut it kind of. I need to go and get sharpier and do some drawing and, and some imagining and see what I can come up with. Anyway, that's that's the plan. It fits. It fits on my board. Uh, I need to start thinking about cutting this big beggar up and getting it on the board so it's sunk. Um, then, and then I can think about, uh, yeah, how to have units and how people, how to have people live on it. And they've kind of come on. I like the idea of the welding hab units on at uh, rough angles, and either so they're either walking up and down slopes, and then that and that'll be really cool, wouldn't it? That'll be really, really cool. I think it'll be a really interesting challenge to make it so there are flat surfaces to play games on. But um, 
have it sunk enough to yeah hmm hmm and somebody living in the cabin. Obviously I'll have to take out all the Playmobil size stuff like the steering wheel and the phone and that kind of thing and the life belt off the back but other bits that'll work really well and they could just have a floor in it that they've put in themselves so they can live flat in it and it's sat there sitting there not sinking anymore. I might be making this on up as I go along. Ah, it doesn't matter though because uh, at this point I think I've only got one hab unit I need to get onto my local FLGS uh, which is probably Wailing Games uh, and um, order some uh, more hab units so they could sit on it and kind of like build up and be part of the town I really love the idea of having one over this side and one over here and a path run up the middle and then this bit here where the container goes that's all kind of empty and, uh, this is such a versatile model I'd love to try and see if I can get another one because when I've done this I might want to do something else with them but this has been sat in my garage for about four or five years with me going one day I will do something with that container ship and now now I'm going to do something with that container ship bloody ace all right wish me luck everybody okay so I've drawn a red line on there can you see that red line there in fact I drew two or three try and get the angle of the dangle right I'm hoping my two red lines match up mostly I did a little bit of measuring um, now comes the exciting part because it's time to get out the Dremel. Um, so, uh, uh, whoops, I didn't sound good. Bits of workshop falling apart. Other rotary tools are available. Okay, now I've got to find some cutting discs. Bin fellow. Fuck off. Jeez. Motherfucker. Right, okay, there we go. No, they're all brushes. That's no good. What was all the dog down to? Okay, melon farmers. Let's see what this does. Now clearly one of two things is going to happen right now, either this is going to work or I'm about to fuck up a perfectly good boat model that I could have just blunked on the thing and built buildings on. But you know, hey ho, in for a penny, in for a pound, yeehaw! <sighs> Doing this in a well ventilated room, wearing eye protection is also worthwhile. A well ventilated room because this isn't cutting this plastic so much as melting the shit out of it. So I'm going to end up with a really interesting kind of underboat shape as well. Bottom of this, this hull. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, well I've, I've cut. A, you can see that. Can you see that line? I've cut a line all the way around the grey superstructure. Um, I think I've cut it all the way through. <laughs> oh, I made a lot of noise. It's quarter past ten. 
Hardy's just come out to tell me that I'm making a lot of noise before I passed in. Um, I haven't yet, <laughs> I haven't yet cut the base of this, uh, this off. Um, I have got lots of molten bits of grey plastic all over my body though. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we're, we're doing good, we're doing good. I think what I'm going to have to do is um, go into those screws, take those screws out and screw the red bit and see what happens then. So, yeah, mm, okay, learning process, here we go guys. This is a very much a learning process, making this, this model. We're just going to run a standing knife blade around here just to see if it has actually all the way through this grey bit. There's obviously the, the old bit that I haven't completely cut through, but it's a damn sight easier getting, just cutting the old bit rather than, yeah, see there's grey, that seems to, this stuff actually has, these models actually have um, uh, buoyancy in it, there's, there's polystyrene in there. Uh, let's just cut the red bit now. I'm I'm suspecting that the reason why the grey bottom of the boat hasn't dropped off is because the inside part of the model, the red, is still saying that has cut. That's not still attached. So uh, yeah. Definitely gonna have to undo some screws. I think for the bottom of this boat is gonna fall off. And then of course I'll have to um, cut the internal bit. <laughs> but that probably is not going to happen this evening because uh, it's too late to be using the Dremel to make too much noise. And um, outside in the workshop means that'll be annoying heck. Uh, my neighbours and I don't want to do that. So uh, I can't imagine any of my neighbours are watching this. If they are, I'm very sorry guys, but I'm making noise for my art. Right. Um, Screwdriver, one, two, three, four, four. There's a bunch of screws I need to remove. Okay, here we go. Boat coming apart. I've managed to get all the screws undone. Oh, crap. <laughs> but I haven't taken these anchors off. That shouldn't be too much of a bother, though. Look, should it? Because we just cut them. No way, the anchors. Alright, so. Now, there's my rib bit. There. Oh, come on. All oh, right, there's bits inside that hold it together. There, there's my grey superstructure. Uh, there's all the bit that I'm not going to use. That's a lot of model. That may well make another bit of model somewhere else, you know. Um, back to the big cat box. And then, and then I'm going to have to cut. Oh, shit, this is going to be a much bigger job. <sighs> Crap. Um, I'm going to have to cut out all of this. The bits of it I don't know what. Uh, which is a lot. However, I can now see what I'm doing, so I'll get a sharpie again, draw across there. Well, we're in the hours of daylight, and I'm not going to annoy my neighbours. I'll cut up the rest of the boat. Nuts, I wanted to do that tonight. I want to get ahead and get making this bloody model. Well, oh well. I can see bits of it. That there. That needs to cut off there. It's all right though. Uh, that's quite good. Yeah, that's all going to come off. Jesus. Uh, see, I have to cut all these bits out. They're really, really annoying. Um, some of that. I might be able to get away with this this bit at the the bow here, because that will just sit on the board and I'll build that up with gunk around it. But effectively, across there, that bit, across there, down there. Oh well. You kind of get the idea though, how slippery it's going to be in the water. I mean, it's not in a minute, is it, obviously, but... Just, God, it's really frustrating now, it's like late at night and I can't, can't cut things. Damn it! Tomorrow, we're going to go... 
Are we going to go dream all nuts? Yes, we are. But yeah, in the meantime, we're not because I'm a nice neighbour like that. I like my neighbours on the whole. They're, they're all right people these days. And, uh, don't want to go spoiling the evening by upsetting them or upsetting their dogs or whatever else. So. Ghoulies. That'll all have to wait till tomorrow. Ha ha ha. This is quite a lot of model to cut out here. One way or another. All the way across the back there. Oh well. Uh, kind of have a bit of an impulse in that one. I could go to bed early. Now, where would the funny that be? That's probably Mr. Dremel to one side. I suppose I could just paint some models for a while, couldn't I? Hmm. Okay, it's the afternoon of the following day. And now, we're gonna... Cut up the rest of the boat. Let's do it. Yeah! Woo, woo, woo! We're gonna cut off, actually. Taking off the boat bit so I can get just to the red deck. Cut up as much of this as I can. See where we are. Okay. Wish me luck. Can I go and put on a pair of glasses, actually? Well, this is taking a little while longer than I thought it would do, but we're getting there. Look, there's bits there, but some of it, there's quite a lot of superstructure to cut through. I've cut through a bit at the back, and now I've got to work down this side on this line, across the bottom, on the inside. But, um, might get it off. I've got to say, though, Magrathea Builder World's looking cool this afternoon. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Uh, bits of burnt fucking plastic. Everywhere. This thing doesn't necessarily cut so much as just melt the crap out of it. So here we go, look. Back in there. Here we go. Now, I've got to say, yeah, no matter how smelly or noisy, um, there's no way I'd be cutting through this with anything else if I wasn't using it wasn't using a rotary, rotary tool, so yeah, needs must and all that. It ain't pretty, mind you. It's going to take some cleaning up. You don't need to see any more until it's done now, though, do you, really? It's amazing how strong this plastic is. How much of it gets, stays in place. Um, I've now cut virtually all this but it's the structural integrity is incredible. I'm just cutting and cutting and cutting. I'm going to have to cut through all the bits in the middle as well. I'm not doing my head right in. Um, see, although if I take the cabin bit off the top for the minute, that might work. I don't know. Just try to get this back section off and then we'll be there. But by God, it takes some work. This bit here has got to come off. Then. I might be in a position to have an idea of what the shipwreck looks like. <laughs> okay, so, and now, <laughs> cut the bottom off my boat. It's in various bits. Um, it didn't all come off in one piece, there's one bit. Um, but it has come off. Um, now I've got loads of this, because of the, the dremel and the nature of it, I've got loads of this melted, molten plastic. Which are kind of like a lot of it's quite brittle, you can just break it off. But I'm going to have to take a craft knife to it as well, I think, and trim away all the rough bits. Probably anything else just to make sure it's safe to use. Um, then I'm going to mount it on the base. Cool thing is, is all this bit here that you can see, which is uh, cutting board, that'll all just be water. So the hab units will place around about and I, I think we'll probably make the um, cabin a somebody's home but there'll be water in various places lurking underneath it which is really cool um, make for a really interesting kind of uh, location so yeah mission accomplished well done to the trusty general um, Ooh, smells a bit in here in a minute. I'm going to open the doors, and more doors. It's been really windy today, but I'm going to open the doors, get some ventilation in here, clear up my Dremel, and then get a craft knife and start clearing up this piece of plastic. And then I'm going to take off some cleats and various other stuff, and then uh, 
stick it down, I think. Just the bottom of that could cut out. Oh yeah. <laughs> that hatch has been cut away for it. Which again, I'll take the hatch door off there, I think, and just have some portal visible there. We'll have to see. Um I've got new hump sump hump new sump uh uh, hab units on the way, so we'll have to see how they kind of like work out when they get here. They should be next day or so, so we'll um, see how that is. But it's pretty neat. I like the look of it. I'm liking this idea very much, but I'm really glad it's been a right pain in the ass doing this cutting off a uh, bit. But I think it's going to be really, really worthwhile. Um, what I want to do is have hab units kind of hanging over each side and a path up the middle, mate. A path, a path, uh, smaller. Now commander figures will fit down the sides of this just about uh, larger ones there's an ogwin he ain't gonna fit down there but i want a, a pathway up there so this is going to involve using um zone mortalis um walkways and the walkways from the uh, hab units and all kinds of things i think i want this to be a real higgledy piggledy kind of like model it'll be really cool um if they got the kind of like the the ship as its foundation but then stuff built up in a random kind of way um, yeah let's tidy up clean down the desktop and start the next bit right i'm gonna stick clean this up i've stuck the uh, outer hull i think uh, to the inner bit and i'm gonna stick this down at an angle on this baseboard the one that i've, I've previously warped <laughs> um, and it's got tissue paper on it well I will add more tissue paper to it because it's all in squares and rectangles which doesn't work from a, uh, a water point of view but I'm going to stick this on and I'm going to leave it to dry and then that's uh, where I'm going to be for the moment uh, I'm going to make the water and stuff I'm going to use a hot glue gun I don't often use hot glue but um, there's so much of this that uh, uh, the hot glue will help fill any gaps as well and make sure it all adheres and sticks to the ball well so hot glue it is I've got to wait for it to heat up first though that is now then model stuck down well and firmly to the base. Got goopy gluey bits around which is fine because that'll make just add to extra sunky stuff. I've filled um, some of the gaps between the rough cut and the deck. That will need more water going onto it. But I am now in the position. There's a little gap there. Still gonna have to wield my glue gum a bit more. Um, I'm now in the position to start thinking about um, walkways and, and and bits and pieces. But it is kind of neat. Look. Don't know where we can see that here. There we are. We have definitely sunk, got sunken ship. And by the time these bits are all painted in as water, uh, it'll be obvious that it's all sunken ship. I think I'm going to take this hatch out here. All right, although I might leave it in as a bit of a surprise. But I think I'm going to take that hatch out. Um, and just have a gaping pool of some water down the bottom there might be quite cool. Got to take off these um, anchor capstans. Um, I need to find the roof. And I think I think I'm going to start thinking about while well, I haven't got um, too many happy units about how this could be turned into someone's home, necromunnery kind of character's home. Um, because it's there's plenty of room, and like decent size, kind of have kind of thing. Can have a bed in the area, sort of bits and pieces, kind of neat. Um, so yeah, leave that as a kind of walkway, get through, splash through. This here could become somebody's home. I've got a sneaking suspicion this is going to end up with quite a lot of detail on it. This model, hey ho. <laughs> okay, so we're interested in this end. Of the model for the time being um, so it is time once again it's the second time already in this video to go digging through the cack digging through the cack digging through the cack we're going to go and look for necromunda stuff um, and bits and pieces of more tireless stuff that might work uh, things are going to help me kit out this area here turn this into its own hab unit i do need to go back out into the garage and find the roof for this actually because then that might be able to take i don't know what the roof looks like the roof might be able to take hab units and bits and pieces too, but we'll, we'll have to see about that, um, which is kind of cool. But in the meantime, I'm going to go dig in through the cack now. I have um, 
recently, uh, the last two videos, I'm acutely aware that although uh, we saw the return of Ubiquitous Orlock last time, one thing we haven't had in the last two videos, and although there is quite a lot of it, I didn't mention the word, did I? I didn't use the W word. The whimsy word. Um, so, uh, yes, that's a uh, take a drink. Now, for those of you who don't know, who might be new to my channel, um, if you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome to my channel. I'm pleased you're here. I hope you're enjoying this deck of Underbuild. Um, but if you are new to my channel, there is something you need to know. Well, viewers of my channel, especially view viewers of fancy builds, boroughs and badges and things, are aware of my use of the word whimsy and whimsical. That's two more. Um, now, it's very, very simple. <laughs> It's a word that gets kind of like used quite a lot around here, uh, and I like those kinds of builds. Uh, but then we decided, because we're grown-ups here, wouldn't it be fun if we introduced a, a, a new feature to Burrows, to uh, Magathia Builder Worlds? And the Magathia Builder Worlds new feature is the Magathia Builder Worlds drinking game. It's very, very simple. Every time the word whimsy or whimsical is uttered on the uh, uh, screen, you have to take a drink of your choice. One shot of, you know, of, of a, uh, a spirit or, you know, a slug of beer or, or whatever else, big gulp of wine. Whatever is your poison when you're sat down watching these videos. So, um, look out for that. I think we must be up to now five already, so uh, it's a good count. Anyway, right, what are we doing? Oh yeah, dig it through the cack. Let's do it. Okay, so this is um, <laughs> one of my boxes of cack. Um, Mostly Necromundry 40k single card CAC. Uh, mostly Stanley Spruce. So I'm starting here. What, of course, I am trying to achieve with this scenery is uh, it keep it sci-fi and keep it very suitable for Necromunda and Swampy, Swampy even. But what I'm not trying to do, what I don't want to do overly, is have too much stuff that is full on ad mech and 40k. Um, so I'm being careful about the components I'm going to pick out of this because of course the HAB units for the ash waste are awesome because they're not covered in 40k iconography. I like 40k iconography um, but I'm, I'm quite liking having a piece of scenery that would really not look out of place on a Star Wars kind of table, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm being very deliberate in what I'm looking for. Not that I actually know what I'm looking for, but I know what I'm not looking for, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah. I have got sprues from other people, which is quite handy, this kind of stuff. Um, the bloody hell are they from? Uh, oh, the name will come to me at some point. Um, I've seen these before. These are kind of cool, um, so I'm going to put those to one side. I'm going to need, need these. Um, Definitely, definitely don't want. Oh, there we go. There's more really obviously 40k stuff. Okay, so annoyingly, I cannot find a roof for the uh, bridge. So I've decided I'm going to make one without a phone core. That'll be a simple solution. Uh, phone core will be easy because I can cut it nice and easy to shape. I can add bits to hang down over side so it'll sit on there and I'll be able to build stuff easily on top of it as well. <clears throat> I've got a good look through all my, my kind of like cack and there's nothing that will work really well as a, a really good roof. Although there's stuff that I could build and stick on it, which is quite neat. And then I think I'll also cut uh, a phone core floor or whatever to go in here too. Um, so then there's a kind of like habitable area uh, actually in the cab uh, which will probably go most of the way across here so I can have some kind of tunnel going through these splash through in the water it's kind of cool so that's what we're going to do I'm going to use a bit of uh, scrap foam court no big deal I've recycled this from something else um, draw a shape on cut it out and then I'll work out the sides and uh, how that's going to work so let's take the ship off the board for a minute um, Cut out some foam board. Board. Foam board. Foam board. Foam board. Gonna keep all this completely open have it open to water, but I've just discovered that two by two bits of zone more tile is four floor tile. If I stick out that and you can see it better. Fit almost perfectly in there, it would only need a little rim around it, and I could actually have plenty more deck. So I think that might be worthwhile doing. I want to keep that water in there, but I think frankly it's 
Uh, it's a great big waste of space. I could have happy units of things there, so I think I'm going to where I've got my, my roof cut out now, and I need to add a way around the edge to keep that held that on securely. Um, I'm going to stick some Zomal Tardis stuff in here, which would be kind of cool. Um, even if I kind of like rip out some of this bit so you can see the water underneath, that might be quite neat. Um, Although then the water underneath will be bloody painted before a bloody bloody bloody. But it will look really cool. Um, but then that way there I get a solid kind of basis here to build hab units on and stuff. It becomes a more useful part of the settlement. Which I quite like. I found a, a Playmobil set of ladders and steps as well which could then go on the front or down onto that top deck which would be quite cool um, which I think I'm probably going to use and all so we're evolving, we're evolving, I'm going to stick some bits in here to, I am going to experiment cutting out this even if I have one horrible kind of like grimy bit that's water and you can see through it I think I've got more so more toilet still somewhere, let's go and have a look Hells yeah, we have a box. There's no more tireless tiles. Look at that one, two, well, three, three complete no more tireless tiles in there. So I'm going to cut them up and start using them for bits of uh, terrain. Yes, 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 yes. One of those, I don't suppose. Yes, yeah, I'm going to go in properly all the way. Nice. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to cut out uh, a two by five section, I think. Alright, so I am pretty damn sure there's going to come a point, probably when I'm painting this model, that I'm going to be moaning and bitching about this. But uh, <laughs> what I've decided to do is I've cut myself some bolts for some. Not What's this stuff called? Foam core. That's not it. That is it. What does that now fit? Does it fit in there? Oh, I don't say I cut the one fucking bit off. Oh, what a prick. Okay. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a bit of this video where I'm only complaining about this idea because I've just added way more complication to the model than I need to but I really like this idea so what we're doing is I've cut some foam core uh, kind of, well it's kind of like girders that are going to sit in each bit of the, the cargo hold we're going to sit, I'm going to stick glue them in and then that way the uh, so the more tireless bit will sit on top of it. I'm also going to work out uh, I've cut my zone more tireless bit out here and I've cut out a whole section here and I've wrecked this bit here so they're going to hang over uh, bits of the sump water underneath and what I'm then going to do is I'm going to build walls around the inside here and here, can you see that? Yeah, uh, so models could go into it but don't get lost under the bottom of the model because otherwise that would be a right pain in the ass. Um, so I'm going to stick one at each end because the zone more tireless, five zone more tireless tiles doesn't quite uh, go end to end anyway and then one across the middle as well to give a bit of extra oomph. Let's see where we are with that. <sighs> That's the plan and the reason why I'm going to remain complaining is because I'm going to have to paint the two water sections early Although they'd probably be doing quite well just remaining black to be quite honest, but um, yeah, I might have to paint those previously prior to the rest of the model. It depends how complicated the rest of the build gets. Main little wall sections under here, they're not out of strength is to stop me losing figures if they go into the sump kind of thing. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. Might have this as a basis for buildings to go on, or might just be some kind of walkway up the middle with buildings hanging off the edge, maybe. 
but I think it'll look pretty cool. It, it's better than just filling up the whole space. Um, I'm not going to paint that before I stick it on. It'll just get a load of black undercoat and then it'll just get some grey and it'll, yeah, I'll, I'll manage. I haven't worked out what's going on here anyway, um, but I do want to stick this in place. And I think I'm going to use hot glue to stick it in actually, down the sides, around the edges, um, and that'll do the trick quite nicely. Um, then I'm going to work out other bits and pieces. I've got to do the roof still back up here. Um, add this set of steps, which is now looking like it's going to go kind of here ish. That'll be kind of cool. Um, from the roof down onto this bit, I want that to be separate to the roof piece. So if I take the roof off, the stairs don't come off, kind of thing. So this is important sticking this in place because this is going to stick to the stairs. Um, so yeah, we'll. Uh, that's the next job. Uh, glue, uh, plug the hot glue gun. Do that. So I found this. I have no idea what it's from, sometime or another. I think it was given to me by my old mate Edward. Um, thanks, mate. Um, it's got rally bit in it, which is really getting in my wick. But I think I'm going to mount this up here on the top. It'll be kind of cool. There'll be a tall up bit, and then it can have a kind of like a crow's nest on it. Um, just for some added height for the model. Coming on, check this out. Look, I've done. Let's move the camera back over here. I've now cut out a roof. I need to put trim around it so it will sit on here neatly. Um, I put a step. That ladder there isn't stuck on properly, but that's going to sit there and it's going to be permanently attached down here. Um, so I'll be able to take the ladder, that's the this roof on and off. I've cut now a foam core floor. So in a minute, it's just sitting in there, um, which is kind of about the right height for some figures. Not that one. That's bloody huge. Um, but for kind of uh, that's a van saw. He fits in there, right? So I'm thinking that this this top part of the bridge would be um, some kind of uh, hab, some kind of home. Um, I might try and sink the floor a little lower so I can get to all the figures in it. Although this is now stuck in and solid, this gives me quite a good walkway out the middle. There'll be water up here. I'm f playing around with the odd kind of like walkway hab base thing like this. To I'll think about where I'm going to be able to stick them in, but I think it's going to work quite well. Um, hab unit here and one over here, it will look kind of kind of cool. I've got two or three builders go. In fact, these things will even you could even mount one in there quite nicely with the right bits. I'm sure there are the right bits I could find. I can mount one in here and that would sit quite neat up there. I want, oh, look at that. I want different heights for these different hab units and pathways and ladders and all kinds of stuff. This is going to be quite a complicated little full of detail kind of model. Again, it's part of the um, sump settlement, so it needs to have, there could be the odd shop. I haven't decided who lives here yet, but there could be the odd shop on this and there could be the odd just general hab kind of unit and that kind of thing. Workshop or whatever. Um, gradually you're moving away from the kind of zone more tireless pier tent stuff to just some sea. Um, so um, yeah I think that's that's kind of kind of cool it. Uh, but we're, we're at that point there I now need these other hab units to arrive they're supposed to have arrived yesterday but they haven't got here. Thank you Royal Mail. Um, but um, you know hey ho we're nearly there. This is this is coming on. We're not nearly there from a finished model point of view. We've got miles to go but it's starting to work out really interestingly. Uh, I might have this hatch off here and have that just as open water there. That might be quite funny. Um, but this is going to look quite neat, I think. It's a nice mix of, of Playmobil Boat and Zone Mortalis and Ash Waste and other cack out of the cack box. I like it. It's coming on nicely. <laughs> but I've decided I want to make the uh, habitation space in the bridge of the... Uh, uh, ship taller and I was going to try and sink the floor but that's getting harder and harder so what I've decided to do is make the roof higher up so I'm making risers that are going to sit on the edge out of 5mm foam board core so if nothing else I can make the whole thing 
five millimeters higher, which will make a lot of difference to a lot of figures. So from that point of view, um, especially as I might end up putting some kind of floor surface on, you never know. I might even make it double the risers, make it whole ten millimeters higher, using a bunch of scrap foam core to do this. No point in wasting good new stuff. Recycled this from a project that didn't happen. So, uh, yeah. But this way, the roof will be up higher. Figures will be able to stand up inside it. So, this is the roof. That's where the step was. Where the ladder's going to be, but I think it's going to be a bit of over now. So, I'm going to stick the uh, spacers on. They're going to have a solid, it's going to be a solid um, outside to the wall anyway, so it doesn't matter if they don't all meet perfectly. Um, so if there's your gap like this, that's fine, but I'll stick some more space on. I'll probably yeah, make it about yeah, 10 centimeters taller. 10 centimeters? That'd be huge, 10 millimeters tall. Right, let's do that. Okay, so this is now my roof for the uh, bridge of the wrecked ship. I took that phone call. Uh, and I took a piece of plastic card and I've cut 20 millimeter strips to go around the edges that will hold the whole thing in place I put some zone with more tireless bits of tile on the top here to add a bit of texture and that towery thing that I found as well uh, is here and then uh, from one of these other sprues uh, from Maelstrom's Edge, that's where they're from. I've started to add some details to the plastic card again just to break up the smoothness of the whole thing, add a bit of texture, and make it easier to paint. Because just with a dry brush on the on the space, it's going to be crap. But with a bit of texture on there and then a load of rust effect, it'll be really cool. So um, this is where I'm at. I'm probably going to have some more of those and other bits. Apart from anything else, they'll like, conveniently cover up gaps in my. Uh, down here I've got a bit of a gap in the plastic card here, so I'll cover that up with that. And then that way there, well, then what I need to do is leave it to go off for the whole thing to dry properly. I haven't decided what I'm going to put on top of this. Probably, like I said, a crow's nest. If I can make something out of bits of zone or tireless tile, um, that might do it. I have a, just a platform on the top, if nothing else. But Or I could use bits from the... Um, the ash waste kit to make some kind of chimney of some description or some something I don't know. We'll have to uh we'll have to see what we can come up with. But what I need to do now is leave this actually to overnight to go off, go dry. So that where then means that I've got um the cabin done in the uh the bridge of the ship, although that again needs texture on the walls, there's plenty of room for loads of details decide what I can do with the big gaping open windows probably leave them actually to be quiet um, but yeah on this on this nice sprue here I've got lots of their little fuse boxes and bits and pieces and different details that can go on the wall fans and vents and what have you which would be quite neat and then of course there's a whole bunch on uh, ash waste kind of Scenery sprues. We interrupt this video to bring you an important pub date. It's um, halfway through July. Most way through July. I don't know. Anyway, it's night time. The puppies are all asleep outside. Chewy, fast asleep. Ludo fast asleep. Get all the dignity. Ahsoka, you're not asleep, are you? Hey, are you asleep? You're not asleep, are you? There's an open eye down there. I can see. Watch your move. He's like that. Shut up. Stop filming me, I'm sleeping man. 
I'm trying to sleep. There we go. Chewy's now yeah, licking bits and stuff. Chewy's now two years and one month. And that makes Soki 20 months. I'm this little Egypt. She must be about nine months old now. Yeah. Bless. Okay, so I'm kind of pretty much at the end of this first part of this build, I think. Um, I didn't know where the first part was going to end, but I'm going to end it here. Uh, we've done quite a lot. I don't know whether I've got as far as I thought I was going to, but actually that's because I've ended up fabricating a lot more than I thought. We've, what have we done? We've cut the boat out, we've mounted it on the board, I've filled in this middle section here. This is going to have water and bits and pieces, that took some deciding, I've added a ladder. Um, I've built the roof for the um, cabin area for the, the bridge part of the build because that didn't kind of exist previously. Uh, so that's kind of like nice, I like that, I'm happy with that. And then I've also, um, which you probably can't see from here, started to add whoops, some detail into the actual top part of the model as well. There's the staircase not stuck on probably. So I've added a bed kind of section and some textures to the floor and this little bit is going to go in as a, a pot bellied stove. And, um, so that's going to become a more detailed kind of like hab space living area kind of thing uh, which is quite neat. That one is sticking in though. The floor's all stuck in and level. Um, although I quite like it being like that. So that's kind of cool. So that's where we are at at the end of the first part. That's a lot of build that's been achieved. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with this. I like the the lines, I like the angle and the fact that it's this submerged, semi-submerged vessel. But there's still quite a lot to do. So what is there left to do then? Well, I mean obviously there's, I've done a lot. Um, and uh, ubiquitous saw lock is happy with a lot of it um, but I haven't achieved the, the bit that I'm aiming for which is the putting the habs on so next time in the next video I'm going to be using um, uh, this for starters and uh, um, this and all oh and uh, probably this too uh, because we're going to get our best out of our kind of like ash waste hab unit kind of things. Um, they are going to make hopefully the majority of the actual structure now that the, the hab bit of this vessel. Um, this The idea if you hadn't caught it already is that the sunken vessel sat there it's obviously on some kind of like slag heap underneath the sludge um, it's wrecked it's not going anywhere and the denizens of the 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 sump have added their uh hab units and bits and pieces and now they live on there so it's going to have all this kind of random stuff well i was talking about random but it's going to be kind of placed on there very carefully and curated in a way that will uh, add for a game of make a really interesting kind of environment um it will go alongside hopefully the board that i made uh, in the last two videos um so that will all become part of a bigger sump settlement um, and I might be able to add more to that as we go. I really like this idea of having this settlement on the water. Um, and the more I've thought about it recently, the more I've thought about the fact that you know, all those things that I made that in, in kind of Pier Town, they almost need like reproducing out now on the sump. So I could do with a mech workshop that makes kind of like um, sump boats and various other bits and pieces out on the out on the water. And I could do with it. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much of that I want to reproduce. But I really like the idea of... Thank you so much. I really like the idea of having a kind of like, you know, an entire kind of like world on the sump in this kind of like wet manky kind of like unpleasantness um i like that for necromunda and and that kind of thing but i also like it for star wars too so some other sump stuff well, i'm gonna be very careful with so i don't over necromunda it so it won't look weird if i'm playing star wars games as well so um that's it uh, um, that is the end of part one of of whatever the hell i'm calling this sump sea settlement no, that's what I called the last one, wasn't it? Did I call the last one that? I can't remember. I'm getting too old for this nonsense. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the container ship.
build. Necromundan sun sea container ship settlement build. I don't know. Fuck it, make it up yourself. You'll work it out. Anyway, this is the end of part one. Um, part two will follow on fairly soon afterwards, I hope, because I've got the bit between my teeth now and I'll stick all these bits of stuff together, get it on and fiddle around with it. It's going to be a lot of fiddling about and trying to work out how these things work, um, which is tricky because I, I don't really want to build too much of the Habby units and bits and pieces before I kind of assemble them and, and get them on here. But if I don't build them to a certain extent, then I won't be able to work out where they go. Uh, so part two then is going to be about adding the Habby units and um, any other detail. Oh, then of course painting the whole thing, which is a bit harmonious and certainly about, especially if I've added plenty of detail to it. Um, this is going to be, if you haven't caught on already, a whimsical kind of thing. Hell, it's all whimsy, isn't it? So that's that's two, by the way. Um, and, uh, um, uh, you know, it's it's that kind of like blend between realism and, and really getting out of there. Um, and I'm, I'm really enjoying actually making this model so from that point of view it's going to be pretty cool there's a lot to do um but make sure if you are not a subscriber of this channel at the moment you you make sure you kind of like click like and subscribe and then you won't miss how this all turns out i'm always amazed how many more people seem to watch the first bits and not the second bits the bits where it's actually like ta-da here's the finished thing because this bit now is it's kind of like half there it's like kids kids toy that i've gone out with the dremel it's kind of cool though look i like the way that's sinking out of the water it is really really neat so if you want to watch and find out how this actually turns out and how this will end up on the necromunda table or another science fiction gaming table then make sure you watch the next bit if you think i should have done it differently then by all means uh, add comments down below you know how this works um if you've got ideas and things that i can add to this before i get into it then please do also make comments down below um uh, and uh, um thank you so much for watching this video uh thank you for being part of my community if you are one of my patrons Thank you very much indeed. Patreon, you say? Yeah, what are you talking about, Patreon? Well, you can support this channel but even more by visiting uh, patreon.com slash worlds where I tend to have competitions where uh, people can win Magrathea pieces of scenery. Um, so from that point of view, um, check that out. Uh, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching Magrathea Builder Worlds yet again. I will see you. Oh, so that sound, sounded, didn't sound good, did it? Right at the end of my video, when I was just about to get out. That's the entire cack box falling over. I'm going to have to go sweeping up the cack. Sweeping up the cack. Sweeping up the cack. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> thank you very much for watching Magrathea Builder Worlds. I will see you down on the sump next time. <sighs> Gotta pick up all the junk now. No, 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 bollocks. No, 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 no. Or oh, I could just ignore it for a minute and play with these. What's that? Clear up your workshop, you messy git. You know, fun sometimes. See it. Oh, bollocks, fuck off. Spilling all the cack, spilling all the cack.